All right. Hi, folks. This is Ben with New London Farm, and uh, with me today is Brandon Clark. He's a uh, big-time uh, keto enthusiast as well as um, adherer to the keto diet. And uh, glad to have you on today, Brandon. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we greatly appreciate Absolutely. it. I know a lot of our audience and uh, listeners are very, very interested to know more about the keto diet and probably get a lot of really good information about it. So uh, before we kind of get into the ketogenic diet and all the details around it and, and the benefits of it, uh, just for the sake of the group, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what you do and family and things like that. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm married and uh, I have five children with uh, number six on the way. That's, congratulations, and, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I've been in law enforcement now for 18 years. Um, I started at 18 years old right out of high school as a cadet. Okay. So uh, I spent the first two years in that unsworn, non-sworn capacity. Okay. And then the following 16 years in a sworn capacity. Um, the first 15 years I spent at Lynchburg PD, and I'm currently okay. with the Appomattox County Sheriff's Office. That's great, man. Now, well, thank you for your service. Appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that very much. Not, I've never served as a police officer, but um, I know that you guys are in harm's way regularly. So thank you for uh, keeping our community safe. I, I greatly appreciate thank that. Thank you. Um, thank you. That means a lot. Any, um, as far as as far as with the the ketogenic diet, any any achievements and stuff that you've had around that? I know that you're you've done some bodybuilding and were very very big in the in the fitness space and probably still mm -hmm. are. Um, to, maybe you can share a little bit around that um, before we get started yeah. into into the details of the ketogenic diet. So go ahead. Yeah. So I started the ketogenic diet um, after my dad told me about it back in 2016. Okay. Um, I was kind of at a point of desperation with my with my overall health, and uh, at the time had uh, five children and was in a very demanding assignment um, in my career. Um, and so I ended up transitioning to the keto mm -hmm. diet, but I had been a fanatic of health and fitness ever since I was in middle school, and. Uh, you know, but keto completely changed everything for me from what the fitness industry typically teaches. But uh, it was in 2019 uh, that I ended up uh, competing in my first bodybuilding competition, which was a, a dream of mine. Yep. And um, I used a, a strict ketogenic uh, approach. Okay. Um, and uh, following. Uh, Robert Sykes, who's known on social media as Keto Savage, and he's the um, the creator and owner of the Keto Brick. Okay. And uh, so he guided me through my prep using the ketogenic diet, and uh, I ended up uh, winning first place in that competition. Um, but aside from that, what has been life changing for me that I never experienced in about the 20 years of following the traditional advice of the fitness industry right. is once I went keto, I was finally able to sustain my weight loss year round and maintain a healthy awesome. body weight, stay lean and fit all year yeah. long, which has life changing effects, not only in my profession in law enforcement, but, right. but my day to day life as a husband and father, right. and uh, has has impact. It had has had life changing impact on me. That's great, man. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm 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 very very interested to know more. Um, I'm sure a lot of our audience is as well. Um, so, how did you, you mentioned it briefly? But your dad introduced you to the to the keto diet back in 2016. Um, and you've been doing the ketogenic diet since 2016. Is that correct? Yes, okay, so, correct. So, so seven years. So seven years. And you've done that pretty consistently and faithfully for the past seven years. Is that right? Correct. And I've also coached uh, in 2018. I started online coaching and I've okay. coached clients around the world um, since uh, since that time. Okay. And a large portion of that was under uh, Robert Sykes, who's the, okay. the one that I mentioned previously. Okay. Okay. And so I've learned so much of what I know from him. Okay. No, that's, that's fantastic. So what were your, um, results or are you meant, you mentioned the weight loss aspect of it. And I think that that's probably the most, um, kind of, kind of like the first shake that people get at the keto diet, right? Is they see the weight loss or they want to have weight loss and, and improve their health right. around either their figure or just, you know, obesity and, and, and people being mm -hmm. overweight is a, is a, 
is basically a, an epidemic right here in the U.S. Um, and so people are looking for ways to lose weight. And that's one of the benefits. But what, what have been some of the other benefits for you, right? You've been able to maintain a body weight, you said, for a very consistent amount of time. Um, but mm -hmm. what have been some other benefits for you uh, doing the keto diet? So uh, what I always tell people is the weight loss ended up becoming just the icing on the cake because mm -hmm. the other benefits are what made me make it a lifestyle okay. because of how much it positively impacted my life. And that was predominantly the mental clarity and focus mm -hmm. that I gained. And yep. uh, it was like when I transitioned into ketosis, which can take you know anywhere from you know one to two weeks to get into ketosis, mm -hmm. It was like the clouds rolled back and the mental fog was gone and I gained a mental clarity and focus that I had never had before. I also experienced having increased and sustained energy throughout the day. I was not crawling to the coffee maker every three hours right. you know, to get more caffeine to make it. Right. And uh, so it was a very real um, energy source yeah. that increased uh, in my life. And then I also noticed it clear up my skin. I uh, struggled with bad acne, especially under my bulletproof vest in mm -hmm. the in the summer months, especially. Right. And um, and that completely cleared up. And I've had no acne issues since then. Wow. To, to the extent that I'll never forget what my wife told me when she saw in the matter of the first few weeks what it did for my skin. She right. said keto has to be healthy if it does that for your skin. Right. Um, and uh, and so those are the 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 benefits that ended up making me decide that this has to be my lifestyle because I finally I realized how bad I felt before right. and didn't want to go back to living right. like that again. Right. Now, that's amazing. Now, obviously, with your role, right, with what you do, you're under a lot of stress, right? You see, mm -hmm. you're you're either engaged or have been around very traumatic events. How has maybe the mm -hmm. ketogenic diet helped you around navigating some of the uh, emotional or stressful situations that you're regularly involved in? Has that helped? Has the ketogenic diet helped? It's it's had life changing impact. I keep using it. It might get old, but I keep using life-changing impact because that accurately describes the impact it had on me. In right. 2016, um, I actually was at a point with my health and and uh, what I was I, I was struggling with what I believe was PTSD-related mm -hmm. effects, which in me um, manifested itself in horrible anxiety, which also led to uh, a level of depression. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember I was, um, I was holding it all together. Like nobody knew that I was struggling with these things to the extent that I was. Um, and, but I was very concerned because I knew something was, something mm -hmm. wasn't right. And, um, and I was not healthy. Right. And I remember being at a, at a training and kneeling down by my bed and praying, to Jesus asking for uh, praying about my health and mm. and um, it was a few months after that that my dad told me about keto my first attempt failed like so is common with so many but mm. I ended up thankfully realizing that that was probably my error and not yeah. the diet and so yeah. I did more research reapplied did it the right way and have not looked back and what ended up happening very quickly in a matter of weeks I would say my anxiety and depression healed wow. and it brought a calming, you know, when you're anxious, you, uh, you are the opposite of calm right. all the time. Right. And it can increase in severity and uh, it brought a calm along with that laser focus. And I felt like in a, in a way of speaking, it gave me my life back and, yeah. uh, and, and brought this calm and peace and, um, focus back mm. to my life and uh, and that that effect and then the additional mental clarity and focus benefits that I described are the core of why I said I, I have to make this my lifestyle because yeah. I am a better husband I'm a better father I'm a better police officer and uh, I'm a better follower of Jesus Christ right because of the health benefits that That's keto awesome. has given me that's awesome man that's awesome thank, thank you for sharing that um, I know that you mentioned, right, some of the weight loss aspects of that. Um, what were your results around the weight loss? Like how, how, how long did it take for you to get down to where you are 
um, from where you were? Like yeah. So time, timeline it, it, wise, like how many months? Like, you know, when, when did you see like, okay, I'm at your, you said you're around 185 right now. How long did it get you to, how long did it take you to get to 185? And basically, you know, your state, you've stayed there for a consistent period of time. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I started at around 205 was okay. my highest uh, weight. And then when I uh, went keto, uh, I ended up losing that weight down to approximately 185 over the course of about two to three months. Wow. Okay. Um, and so it was it was very quick. And then when I ended up doing the bodybuilding competition in 2019, um, and I used the strict ketogenic approach to then take my weight, which yeah. is not sustainable. You only do it sure. for the competition. Right. It's not even healthy to try and maintain that level. Right. But uh, over the course of 20 weeks, I took my weight from approximately 185 down to where I stepped on stage at 159. Okay. Um, wow. So, a- so yeah, and what's amazing is a lot of people and several of my clients I have uh, that I have coached, I have seen people lose as much as 20 pounds in the first month. Now, not everybody, right. but – it's very common in that first month to lose a lot because you're also flushing out a lot of water because mm. carbohydrates hold water. Mm. And uh, so, but when people say, ah, a lot of that's just water weight, my response is, yeah, and I was carrying around that around every day. Right. You know, if it was a backpack full of bricks I was carrying around every day, it still makes life changing impact to sure. take it off. Oh, most definitely. And, um, most definitely. So that's amazing, man. That's great. Um, what, as far as just for the good of the group, you know, um, what, what is the ketogenic diet? Can you give us some, some things around that, some, you know, framework, you know, what, what's included, right? What kind of foods can you eat? What kind of foods, mm-hmm. foods do you avoid, right? What, what kind of foods are excluded yeah. from the ketogenic diet? Go ahead. So, uh, the way that I would best explain it is that you are restricting carbohydrates mm-hmm. so that to the extent that your body ends up switching from relying on carbohydrates, which turn into glycogen for energy Mm -hmm. and transitions to using fat, which turns into ketones for energy. And so what I explain to people is you're essentially, it's, you have to do it in a, you have to be careful about how you go about it so that you don't experience the keto flu because of the transition that's going on in your body. Um, to where you're essentially like running your body into a brick wall to force it to switch energy sources. Uh, But what's very important in that and what I have found to be the most effective strategy for me and for the people that I've coached is to have a high fat strategy. You want to have 70 to 80% of your calories coming from fat. You want to have moderate protein. 20 to 30 percent of your calories coming from protein and you want to restrict your carbs to what i tell people is try to consume no more than 50 total carbs per day okay that's not net carbs 50 total carbs per day and if you can get it down to under 20 total carbs per day that's where the magic happens if you can hit those macros and then restrict your carbs to that extent and what effect that has in the body that I'm not going to try and get too scientific here, but you mm. suppress insulin and insulin is not unhealthy if you are a healthy individual, if you're metabolically healthy. But most of America and what I was, was not metabolically healthy. I was insulin resistant. Right. My insulin and um, I, I was not processing carbohydrates efficiency, efficiently and right. the blood sugar that would result. And so what suppressing your carbohydrates does is it helps – suppress your insulin and Mm -hmm. prevent blood sugar spikes because when you eat carbohydrates your sugar your blood sugar spikes and it essentially cuts off fat burning and Mm. goes into burning carbs glycogen right so if you keep that suppressed it keeps your body in fat burning mode and so it's not to say that insulin spiking it's a natural process it's healthy when you're a healthy individual Mm. but that is why keto so often can dramatically improve somebody who's experiencing a type 2 diabetes mm. to help them control their insulin without having to control their blood sugar without right. having to take insulin mm-hmm. and uh, and it can heal like what I experience is it improved my insulin sensitivity 
and uh, made me metabolically healthy again by going strict keto. And then once you get healthy again, you can talk about introducing healthy some healthy carbs back and stuff like that if you want to uh, because you're now metabolically healthy again and right. insulin sensitive and your body can process those correctly now. Interesting. That's, that's amazing, man. Um, so just – around foods that, that I should be eating, right? It's going to be foods with yeah. higher fat, fat content, right? So that's going to be um, meats predominantly um, and yes. nuts, a lot of nuts, and then and then a lot of your uh, plant-based high fat, higher fat foods, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, and it, there's a little bit of a learning process, of course, that takes place in order to – that's why I always recommend people get an app like MyFitnessPal and track yeah. foods so that you can see the macro percentages and everything from the total calories you're okay. consuming. But I would tell people you want to really focus down on fatty meats or if you're getting a lean meat, which is also very healthy, you just want to make sure you're getting in an additional fat source like – butter or extra virgin olive oil or you know uh, a, a product like the keto brick that gives very healthy fats um, you want to be you want to have a focus on making sure you're getting enough fat because that's your energy source right now but uh, but meat and whole eggs is what you want to focus on if you're going to eat a steak you want to get the ribeye or the New York strip not the sirloin if you're going to have chicken like you can uh, you, you would prefer the chicken thigh instead of the chicken breast, breast right? or if you have the chicken breast, you want to have that external fat source. You right. want the regular bacon and not the turkey bacon, <laughs> right. um, you know, right. those types of things. And, uh, and then there's, you know, you can have green veggies, you can have um, like berries in moderation because they're lower on that glycemic index. Right. Uh, but that's where I tell people focus on meat and eggs. And, uh, and then if you have some butter or heavy cream in your coffee or things like that, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, that's where I tell people though, like if you want to have some of the other things that are keto friendly, that do have some, a little bit of carbs though, that's where you want to get dialed in on tracking because that can, that not only helps you learn, but it helps you hit those macro percentages. And right. as long as you hit those macro percentages, what I have experienced and have seen is it yields success that 70 to 80 percent fat 20 to 30 percent protein and restricting your carbs to no more than 50 total per day and then if yeah. you're on your Keep, game if you can get below 20 you're, that's you're going to see some huge success awesome. yeah so really um things like avocado you know extra virgin olive oil coconut oil those type yes. of things th those are healthy fats right that you should that you should yes. be incorporating as part of the ketogenic mm -hmm. diet um, nuts, yes. I would assume, are similar, right? Um, almonds yeah. and, and walnuts, different things like that. But really what you're trying to pull out is the, the, the carb-related foods, right? Cereals, pastas, oatmeal, right. um, you know, th things of that nature. What about fruits? It's probably a common question you get. How about certain fruits? Yeah. Like, should I, you know, should I not be eating apples? Or, you know, should I try to limit the intake of apples, oranges, you know, bananas, things right. of that nature? Go ahead. Yeah, I would say that those don't ever think that those are unhealthy. Right. Anybody that tells you that those are unhealthy, I mean, it's a single ingredient whole food, right. which is healthy. Right. But you might not be metabolically healthy. Right. So, which means that your body is not processing any carbs the way that it should. Right. And so, if you want the the healing effect that keto can bring to your yeah. metabolic health, to your insulin sensitivity, I always tell people too, you're gonna yield the greatest benefits and the quickest results if you go all in on keto and restrict those total carbs. That total carbs can add up very, very quick. Yeah. So I would encourage people to at least do several months, like ideally at least two or three or four months of strict keto and you're going to experience that healing effect. You're going to experience a, an amazing transformation, right. and probably um, probably reach your goal. I would say do strict keto until you reach your goal, and then once you get into a maintenance phase, yep, you have now become metabolically healthy. Your body is healed. You've become insulin sensitive, and if you want to start incorporating back in sure. some fruits, some more veggies. Um, single ingredient whole food carbs you can absolutely do that and your body's now healthy and able to um, right. now a lot of people end up choosing not to though because 
uh, they like eating keto, and that right. was the experience for me. Like, I, I do eat some fruits now that I'm in a maintenance phase. I usually eat some fruit every day, and it doesn't negatively impact right. to me. Um, but but uh, the predominant sources of my daily nutrition comes from meat and eggs and the uh, keto brick. That's cool. That's great, man. Um, as far as potential health risks or effects, what what would be your conversation around that? You know, people say, hey, is, yeah, is this I, dangerous for me? That type of thing. I, obviously, we're not doctors and, you know, we, 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 right. would, we would lead and you would lead with that. But go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. I recommend you talk to your doctor um, about any dietary changes you want to make or interested in making. But from what I've seen, anytime anybody has experienced anything when trying to incorporate the keto or carnivore diet um, that has caused them to have a health mm -hmm. concern, it's been uh, an issue with how they're doing it. Hmm. Um, it. It's dealing with a lack of, of knowledge about how to properly go about transitioning to hmm. a ketogenic diet. And so what I would recommend to people is there's a lot of good keto doctors out there. The one that I would recommend above all else is Ken Berry. Okay. Um, that's B-E-R-R-Y. And he wrote a, a very popular book called Lies Your Doctor Told You. And if you go to his YouTube channel, very popular channel, you can type in um, any ailment or any concern that you might have, and he's going to mm -hmm. give you, he's a board certified family phys physician, he's going to give you the medical um, uh, answer that you're okay. looking for, and he's going to be able to back it up. And uh, so I would refer anybody to that. I have not seen anything that makes me sincerely concerned that it's bad for anybody okay. although i'm not going to try and make the claim that it's absolutely for Every, everyone right either. right no that's fair enough no i appreciate yeah. that um and and there's not there's not really a particular age group or demographic that um that keto wouldn't necessarily apply so what i mean by that is like it's okay for like if children were going to do keto right that mm -hmm. you know uh women well, go ahead yeah, yeah. And in fact, the ketogenic diet, when it was, uh, it's been around for a long time. I believe it was a long time ago. I want to say back in the 1920s. Um, but doctors were using the ketogenic diet to help children that were having seizures, that mm. they found that the seizures were um, worsened by carbohydrate intake. Crazy. It's crazy. And so they, they initially found out that from fasting, children would experience a benefit with their seizures. But then they ended up doing more research and finding out that a ketogenic approach mimicked the same benefits or similar benefits of fasting. And when children followed a ketogenic mm -hmm. diet, it dramatically improved, if not completely healed, their that's issue awesome. with uh, seizures that was yeah. disrupting their entire life. That's, that's amazing, man. That, that's cool. So, yeah, so children, obviously, that, that's where that was the, the proving part of the proving ground for the ketogenic diet. Um, as yeah. far as, you know, um, women, there's no issue there, would you say? Right. Right. And, I, and men, yeah. And yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I would say that uh, with women, a lot of times, if they, they are experiencing an ish with the ketogenic diet, would they? What is so common with women is they're under eating. Mm -hmm. They're not, not eating enough. Right. And their metabolism has slowed down. And so it, a, a lot of times, if they're experiencing any issues with the keto, ketogenic diet, it's not saying that they necessarily need carbs and they right. should increase the amount that they're eating right. um, and increase their calories. And a lot of times that will resolve any issues. Now, some women may need some carbohydrates to right. some extent, but not none of the processed junk that we're right. talking about like right. you all of us need to eliminate as much as possible the highly processed packaged right. foods yeah you know that uh that i are causing so much of the health crisis in america right but but you know some women may benefit from some of the keto friendly carbs mm -hmm. which are like green veggies and the berries and, and stuff like that okay. and that you know can help them uh, but a lot of times it's due to them just simply not eating enough right. and they need to eat more protein and more fat right. and that would resolve the issue they're experiencing. Okay. No, that's great, man. I, I appreciate that. Um, in your experience, uh, what's been 
typical results for folks who start, you know, their, their first couple months, you know, their first one or two months? What, what, what have been the results of people that you've worked with that have started keto and have been on it for a month or two? What would be an average result that you've seen? Go ahead. Yeah. So kind of the kind of the framework for what I usually see is somebody's really intimidated at first. Yep. Um, but they they start incorporating it mm-hmm. and they start uh, start walking down that that road and learning from um, learning from any of the mistakes that they're making. Right. And they're gaining knowledge as they're doing it because they're tracking their foods and they're learning right. what's in food and. Um, as they walk through it, they usually enter into ketosis and usually about 10 to 14 days okay. is it usually that time. And usually at that time, that's when they experience uh, increase in energy, the mental clarity and focus benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, they also uh, a lot of times experience um, because of the anti-inflammatory benefits, they feel a relief of daily nagging pain that they've been experiencing. Interesting. And that's something also that I experienced that I forgot to mention before was the daily pain that I was relieved from. Um, then they also, in that first two weeks, a lot of them will often lose up to 10 pounds in water weight that they're walking around with from the inflammation and the excess carbohydrates they had been consuming. And that's in the first two weeks. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then some people, I would say it's common to see at least 10 pounds lost the first month up to 20 pounds I've seen in the first month alone. Wow. Um, and then once you, uh, once you, it's very normal at that point with any weight loss strategy that's mm-hmm. effective is that it's going to slow down. You experience your most dramatic results in the first month. Right. And then that second month, you probably are going to experience an additional five to 10 pounds of weight loss. And this is dependent okay. on the person. Um, and then as you continue, probably about five pounds per month. Okay. And uh, I've, I've seen transformations from people I've personally worked with that one, one police officer in Lynchburg lost uh, 55 pounds in four months, wow. Jonathan Farrar. Wow. Um, one That's of the impressive. deputies I worked with, I work with at uh, Appomattox, he lost, I want to say it was 56 pounds, six months. And so wow. he, this is life changing weight oh, loss. Yeah. And that's yeah. not even considering the mental and energy and pain and all of right. those benefits that right. they experience. Most definitely. No, that's amazing, man. So we have about uh, 10 minutes left. Um, so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll try to run through some, the last bit of questions, if you're good with that. Um, Absolutely. So what do you do if your weight loss stalls, plateaus? Yeah, so when your weight loss stalls, uh, number one, what you can do, and this is because certain foods have different impacts Mm -hmm. on your body. A lot of it relates to inflammation and your individual body type. So normally what I'll do with someone is I'll tell them, hey, first thing let's do, let's remove dairy, any dairy. Now, you'll be able to introduce it back in later Mm -hmm. once you reach your goal and you switch over into maintenance. But a lot of time that's an effective strategy Mm -hmm. to keep pushing your body in the direction wants to okay. go next yep. i would say remove all nuts and nut butters because they okay. can be inflammatory as well and then i would tell people to remove all veggies because in some people veggies can have an inflammatory effect as well Interesting. and uh, especially people with autoimmune issues okay so those are the first three things that i'll do that usually always work and my last result is to start restricting calories um because you know, a lot of time i what the ketogenic does is it has a natural appetite suppressant effect. So when you're eating enough fat and enough protein and you're getting all your nutrients in and you're getting that natural appetite suppression effect, yep. your hunger and your cravings come under control and people just start having the weight fall off of them without even restricting okay. calories yet, which is yeah. life-changing because right. usually people fail diets because they're hungry they're starving right. yeah they're starving yeah yeah so that, that, that's helpful right so if somebody's at a plateau right there's some there's some additional levers that that might be able to be adjusted that they can continue yes. to, to see the weight loss um, yes but um, what what percentage of results um, with the ketogenic diet is from the actual nutrition or the diet itself and then the, the other percentage from exercise, right? So you obviously have people that, yeah. hey, I want to get a healthy lifestyle. They're probably going to do both more than likely. Right. What's the, 
how does that break down, right? What, what percentage of the loss or the results is from the ketogenic diet and what percentage is from exercise? Go ahead. Yeah, so what I like to tell people is I was like, go all in, especially if you're just starting. Don't, don't say like, I'm gonna start going to the gym an hour for every day or six days a week. Right. Um, like what I try to, I try to get people feeling better first, right. which comes from following and adhering to the diet. Right. So I'm like, initially uh, go all in on the diet and you know, maybe add some walking in, go start going for mm -hmm. some walks. And uh, what ends up happening is people end up feeling better and then okay. they actually will tell me like I'm ready to start working out more and it will naturally start to happen. So right. what I tell people is, is the main lever I pull is the keto diet. It's the main thing right. that has had that life changing impact on me being able to lose the weight, right. sustain the weight loss and continue to have all of those other health benefits. Right. But I would view exercise as an accelerator. Like okay. your results are just going to be that much, much better, better if you add if exercise. If you start to... incorporating exercise. Yeah. Yeah, and but I would tell people too, don't think you need a gym membership. Like I've never had a gym membership and uh, the majority of my uh, fitness life, which has been over 20 some years now, has been focusing on body weight exercises at home right. or with resistance bands. Right. And uh, so what I tell people is you can have a an amazing physical transformation and your, your workouts be nothing more than walking, push-ups and body weight squats and right. you don't need a membership you don't need equipment right and you can transform and be healthy and fit all year long by that's incorporating amazing. that's amazing that amount of exercise right. but even without exercise the diet itself will generate a a substantial amount of results hands down i've right? had i've had people lose 20 to 30 pounds in a matter of three months um with no exercise beyond just starting to do regular walking that's that's insane. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so you've answered the question like, hey, what do I do if I don't have a gym? So I'll go on to the next one. Um, how do you do meal prep? Obviously, it's different yeah. different uh, structure. So go ahead. So that is a huge thing that causes people to fail because they think they got to take a whole day out of the week and prep all their meals out in Tupperware and mm -hmm. everything. I have never done that, and I'm never going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm busy. I'm on the time. I've got yeah. a big family. Um, my work is I, I operate out of a vehicle. I'm not going to do it. What right. I do is I cook meat in bulk. Yep. And I will rely on eggs. You can whip up eggs in no time. Right. Rely on eggs. You can whip up bacon in no time in the oven. And then I rely on the keto brick. Um, which is what I bring on shift with me all the time. Now, most of the keto products out there are gar garbage. The keto brick is the exception. I know the people. I know how they make it. It's the highest quality keto product on the market as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it's a 1,000 calorie keto brick. Bring it with me. That's what I eat throughout my 12-hour shift. And then typically when I come home, my wife now makes a lot of our meals um, around meat and or eggs. Okay. And so whatever she's making for the family, she'll make extra meat for me and just set it aside. Right. And uh, so they might be having some carb sources and then she'll just make extra meat for me. So we always are cooking meat in bulk and then we'll have like a big container of a couple pounds of ground beef, you know, or chicken, chicken thigh, um, bacon. And right. then if none of that's in there, I can whip up scrambled eggs in no time and right. be completely on track with my right. goals. And your and your job shifts are twelve hour shifts, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so yeah yeah okay. No, that that's helpful. That that's that's really beneficial. We've got about three three more minutes left. Um, what's what's your favorite food or your go to food for for doing keto? Ground beef. I okay. absolutely love ground beef. And what's amazing is, is when you are transitioning into keto, like a lot of people will say that they don't necessarily like the taste of these foods. And you know what? That is common because your palate changes. Mm -hmm. So when you're eating the highly processed garbage foods, healthy foods aren't going to taste good to you. Right. You know, but what ends up happening is when you, when you transition into ketosis and you're following a keto diet, right. these foods your body, number one, you start to crave the fat as the energy source because your body recognizes it as the energy source. And then on top of that, your palate 
gets away from um, palatable foods they processed that most Americans are eating, right. and you actually begin to enjoy so much more the single ingredient whole foods. And so I would say mm. number one is ground beef, number two is eggs, and number number three, but I enjoy it so much, is the, the keto brick, which is made up of really high quality single ingredient whole foods. Cool. That's awesome, man. Um, we've got about a minute and a half left. So if I fall off the wagon, what's the best way to get off track? I would say always remember you are just one meal away from getting back off on track. Okay. So, and that's the way I handle my cheat meals. I have cheat meals on a on a weekly basis. I'll go out on a date night with my wife. I'll do a pizza night with the kids or for a movie. Yep. And what I tell people is, as long as you supervise yourself, as long as you follow a ketogenic lifestyle, I would say I follow it about eighty to ninety percent of the time. Okay. But I weekly. You know, the other week, my wife and I went to a Chinese restaurant. You're not getting a keto-friendly meal at a Chinese, right, right. Chinese restaurant. Sure. So for that one meal, I don't worry about it. Now, what I would tell people is if you are pursuing a goal, a, a, a goal, then the least you cheat, the less you cheat, the faster you're going to reach your goal. Okay. So I say if you're pursuing a goal, then, and you want the fastest results possible, cheat as least as possible i would say like no more than maybe once or twice a month if not going strict for two or three months okay. but then once you reach your maintenance you can you can cheat you know once or twice a week and awesome. to get right back on track you're always just one meal away from being back on track uh, that's fantastic all right a couple of yes no questions for you um or, or short short hit questions we got 30 seconds um are you accepting new clients for your coaching so I kind of do it on a case by case okay. basis right now. So okay. anybody that's interested, they can email me at keto street cop at gmail.com. Perfect. And we will pause it for right there. Um, do you want to do a part two? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we'll do definitely. part two. All right. Thanks. All right.